G'day, I'm ET and welcome to the show. This week I'm on the New South Wales South Coast fishing the Kangaroo River for Australian bass. I've got my brother Michael down here with me and we'll be fishing from the Hobie as well as walking the banks. I'm sure there'll be plenty of action. Check it out. There are bass from the bank. I'm there, brother. Oh, there we go. And you slurp the lure in. And from the kayak. And a handsome little fish. Plus elbow slapping whiting and river trolling for kingfish. Oh, yeah, let's tell kingfish. From Sydney to Wollongong and Batemans Bay, Hunts Marine is your one stop for everything boating and kayaking. They've got the full Hobie range, so Hunts Marine is my first stop on a trip to the Kangaroo Valley River. It's lush dairy country here, and my brother Mick and I plan to camp and fish on the farm of an old friend. We drop in to say good day to Graham Cochran right on milking time. While Graham gets back to work, and before we can go fishing, Mick and I have our own quick job to do. Just about got the Coleman campsite set up. Got the beautiful big eight person, and uh, it says eight person, but you know, I like a little bit of comfort and a little bit of space, so they'll just be myself and my brother in here. We got all the Coleman gear. The river runs right through Graham's property, a perfect location for some peaceful and uncrowded fishing. Yeah, I'll go up Got him? Yep. Work, brother. Straight on. Get into Just him. Went bang. Watch that snag there. Oh, yeah, you got him. You got him underneath. He's good. Oh, yeah. nice. Oh, nice bass, yeah. Nice. Yep. Nice one off the kickoff. First cast of the day. I'll pull him up. Hang on. Make sure he's. Yeah, I'll bring him in here. Oh yeah! Hey, beauty! Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. That's a nice little fish, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good way to start. First, First crack cast. in. It's a good looking snag, isn't it? And the water's pushing. Look at that, hey? Mm. Yeah, they're lovely little fish, aren't they? Beautiful little fish, that one. Well, we'll pop him back in. He's ready to go. Great, let's get a couple more now. Well the water's pouring over these rapids, there's a whole pile of rocks all through here and what it does, it sends a nice deep hole on this side here. It's a, a perfect ambush spot. I'm looking over into this foamy section and it just looks so inviting. I reckon that is where the fish are going to be holding. Where? Yeah, great. <laughs> Some there, brother. It's not a monster, but he took it right on the surface as a lure. Yeah. As soon as it touched the top, as as it push. Not too bad at all. Well, yeah, he's nice. Nice side. He's tried to drill me on that side. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All nice right. Fish. Hey, he's a bit, bit fatter. He's a chunky fish. Broader. Oh, look at that. Hey. 
It was one little tiny bloop. And as soon as I moved it, whack. Yeah, very happy. All right. Back in the drink. Oh. Cool. Very nice. Only a little bloke. There we go. Quite a long fish. And look at that, beautiful. He just slurped it off the surface and uh, just dropped it whoop, straight on top of that of that little rock there. And uh, there was this little pop. He just slurped the lure in. It's a gorgeous fish, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. You know, unfortunately, a lot of our, our rivers these days are getting swamped by carp. They're destroying the habitat for these beautiful native fish. That's why it's so important to release every one we catch. <laughs> okay. The gear I'm using is extremely light stuff, and that's all you need for bass. This rod here, beautiful little Shimano, 3-0 range. It's a little three to five kilo, and just got plenty of grunt down here, but nice and soft on the end. Nice and easy, and that's what you want when you're chasing most of the, most of the estuary species. It's matched up with this little twin power. This is a 1,000, and a four pound Power Pro, an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. And a Gillies Warlock hard-bodied lure. And the great thing is with this little outfit is you can carry it anywhere, you can chase all the different estuary species as well as come into the rivers and chase golden perch, Australian bass and maybe even land a Murray cod, but uh, not a big one. And nightfall sees us back at the camp. Well, something special brother about uh, the open fire. Yeah, it's just wonderful, and it? it's so peaceful compared to uh, being back at home. Yeah, it's great city to be life. Sitting here in the peace <laughs> and quiet. So very different from city life. This is great. This is what we love. In any estuary system, the tides play a huge role. At the moment, we've got an incoming tide. So if I parked on the sandbank over there and didn't put the anchor in. I really couldn't expect this boat to be here in half an hour. It moves in at such a rapid pace. On the other hand, when the tide's pouring out and I go and pull the boat up on a nice sand spit in half an hour time, the boat's going to be high and dry and I'm going to have to wait the full cycle of a tide change before I can pull her off. So the tide plays a very important role. One thing and one piece of equipment that's crucial on your boat is a really good quality marine sounder. Now I've got the Garmin 751, a beautiful unit, and as we're cruising over the flats here, I can tell that I'm in 0.9, so just under a metre of water. As I move further that way, it'll become a lot shallower, but you've got to have a really good perspective when you come out on the water. Observations are a very important thing. And I can see that the channel's running through here, but there's also a slight channel running up around the back there. And what we might do is see if we can get around that one. Important to be keeping a very close eye on the Garmin. It'll tell me if there's any, uh, any problems and we're getting too shallow. The other thing it'll tell me, and on this river system, there's a couple of rock bars and one big section over here called the ballast heap, which is a whole pile of rocks covered in oysters. It's high and dry at low tide, but as the tide moves in, it disappears. But uh, once that water rises, it's a really dangerous structure and any boat that heads in that direction will really come a cropper. So I guess before you even go out boating, you've got to make sure you have a bit of the lay of the land before you go. Look for obstructions, read as much as you possibly can, get online and check out all the information about the river system you're on. In this case, it's the Port Hacking River, and I know that ballast heap because I've come close a few times in the past. So there you have it, a Garmin sounder. Make sure you know the tides and you'll be Nautilus Marine safe. With squid in the live well, good fishing's got to be close at hand. Just like that, over he goes. I'm set up for some slow river trolling, and it doesn't take long for my live squid to draw a bit of attention. 
Oh, come here. Oh, oh, this could be anything here. Wow, this is a strange bite. Could have gone down deep. Might even be a flathead. But, uh, oh, he's starting to pull some line. We've been trolling some live squid out the back. Beautiful baits they are. Absolutely perfect size, about yay big. This might be a, a little kingfish. Oh, it is too. A little yellowtail kingfish. Well, that's what we're after, but I was hoping a monster model, which would absolutely crush our squid and go berserk. He hasn't really put up much of a fight at all, this bloke. And what I've been doing is just uh, cruising along in this 570. It's a cruise about, and I tell you what, it's a perfect boat for the family, whether you're, whether you're fishing, fishing or a fishing nut like me, or you want to get the family into fishing, or you just want to go skiing or, or wakeboarding boarding out the back of this with a 135, 135 Evinrude. They are a handsome fish. There we go. Oh, beautiful afternoon kingfish. <laughs> They're impressive looking fish, aren't they? Just so streamlined. This one here would be lucky to be maybe two kilo. But there's bigger ones that live in the river here, and that's why we're trolling these live squid. All right, we'll get this bloke back in the water pretty quick. Oh, that quick. He's gone. <laughs> All right. It's early next morning in the lush dairy country of the Kangaroo River Valley, southwest of Sydney. We're awake with the cattle and ready for another day of peaceful fishing in these beautiful surrounds. Mick and I have had a great night in our spacious Coleman tent and we're setting up for a bank versus kayak bass fishing challenge. Well, this morning I've got the edge. I'm putting the Hobie kayak in and we're gonna work our way up this big pool and hopefully catch some bass. My brother, he's already jumped out of the car, raced straight down to the pond down here and I can see him casting. So uh, I'll get the Hobie off and we'll start to make our trek all the way up this beautiful stretch of waterway. The Hobie snap-on wheels make it easy for me to get it down to the water single-handed. And once down on the river, the Mirage drive system makes it even easier for me to pedal with far less effort and noise than paddling. And fishing from such a solid platform, where I can stand or sit with equal ease, it's not long before I'm on. Fish on, but... Yeah. Oh, just got around there. Oh, he's got me under the bank. Swing the Hobie around. Yes, baby, but he's down underneath there. Got to get it off there. Wind. Come on, buddy. Off. Yep. Some little fish. Get this little bloke back. Oh, here we go. How are you feeling, mate? You ready to swim? The Hobie gives me the freedom of the river all the way up and downstream. But how's Mick going back there on the bank where I left him? Well, that was a bit of fun. You hooked up, brother. No, oh, nice, brother. Yeah. Ah, look at that. Beautiful little warlock. Oh, wow, that's a good shot. So, yeah. They pull hard, right, don't they? Yeah, they go pretty hard. Oh, that's a nice, nice fish. See you later, buddy. Get a swim, or? Oh. Well done, brother. That was a good session. Yeah, great. It's a beautiful summer's night, and I thought 
I might come down to the uh, to the water and catch a few prawns for bait tomorrow. Now, I'm going to go up on the flats and chase some whiting and nothing better than live prawns kicking around. Brim also love them, also flatties. Oh, all right, down at the water's edge. Let's have a look out here. Oh, yeah, perfect. Oh, there's a prawn already. Just what I wanted to see. I've got a really good torch with a great bright light. Got my Plano 700. Now, that's my live bait tank. And basically, it works. It's a container in a container. So we can keep and then fill that up. Get some fresh water in there. Put it in. Slide that in and drop my prawns into the top. Most important thing is the net. So you've got the fine mesh net. Prawns, they jump backwards. So that means I've got to come around behind the prawn with the net, sit the net right at his tail. He won't move. And then what I've got to do is just kick in front and he's going to jump back into the net. That's the secret of it. And if there's one thing more satisfying than a calm and quiet night collecting your prawn baits, it's heading down river in company with some good fishing mates to use them. We're cruising in the Quintrex cruiseabout in company with another boat manned by my name bucker mate Tony Didio and members of his family. And we're headed for a spot where Tony's promised our prawns will turn into respectable fish. Good fish. Well done. He followed you right in, eh? He got me right at my feet. I was actually lifting the lure out of the water and he had tag and release. <laughs> Lift you right up a little bit now. Just bring him close to the edge. Grab the line and hang up. The variety of ages among the fishermen is matched by a variety of fish. A nice looking Ludrick. And there's more to come still from this healthy waterway. He's on, look at him go. <laughs> that was the... Go for it. Nice fish, mate. Quality, hey? Fish, mate. Yeah, look at the size of him, eh? What yeah, a cracker. They're, they're the ones that we get up. I like this spot here. Having them touching your elbow sort of thing. Yeah, big, quality fish. Big elbow slappers. It's a beauty. They're the ones you want. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> mate. That's a cracker. We might have him for dinner, I think. So, all right. Well, just as quick as the campsite went up, our Coleman campsite is getting pulled down. Time to go home. I hope you enjoyed the show and I look forward to escaping with you somewhere on the water next week. See you then. Well, I hope you enjoyed my fishing video. If you did, make sure you like it 
and comment below. If you're new to this channel, subscribe and tell a friend and make sure you press the notification bell so you're notified of our next video.